Welcome to the Latera Microsystems webinar about metadata cleaning and our path to the best solution. I'm Richard McDougall. I'm the product manager for Metadata, and I am joined today by Matt James, our 3B clean expert and one of the industry leaders in metadata remediation. Metadata has always been an issue, whether it was marginalia before the advent of computers or today's electronic information attached to a file. But it really became a hot topic in the 1990s with the increased use of electronic communication. Both Metadact and 3B Clean were released by Latera and Microsystems respectively in 2010. Since that time, there have been many improvements to the products. There have been multiple stories in the marketplace about metadata disasters and uh, greater demand by the market to do more with the cleaning component of the document lifecycle. In January 2018, Latera and Microsystems joined forces with the Sackett Group to become the world's leading document lifecycle company. In today's discussion, we will uh, discuss the Metadact workflow and have a brief demo. We'll discuss 3B clean matters and uh, the, how they relate to Metadact. We'll do a discussion of comparing and contrasting the products and discuss how to get there from here. Let's move to our Metadact demo. The most common use of Metadact is via Outlook, when a user attaches a file to an email and sends it outside the firm. We've heard loud and clear from 3B Clean and Metadact customers both that users do not want a lot of extra clicks to clean and send an email. And this is part of our ongoing strategy. <clears throat> so let's see the simplest use of Metadact. Uh, we want to make sure alerts are turned off. We'll be cleaning on the server and we will use the company's default profile. Just as usual, we create a new email, address it externally, we'll give it a title, and we will attach a file. When we click send, the first thing that takes place is it looks for the recipients and sees if there's anyone external. It checks for passwords on the document, and then it sends it to the server for cleaning and release. Very simple. If your organization wants to allow users the ability to skip cleaning, an additional step is required. So let's see how that would happen. We're going to leave alerts off, but we're going to switch to local cleaning. We'll also use the company's default profile. We'll create a new email, address it externally, give it a title, and attach a file. In this case, when we click send, the same starting steps take place, but we're presented with a user interface that provides a number of different options, but in this case, we're only interested in skip. Click skip, file goes directly to the exchange server and out the door. The number of clicks required uh, is directly related to the options that an organization allows and how many of those options the sender decides to use. So let's have an example of that very intrusive methodology. We're going to turn alerts on and we'll clean on the server. We'll create an email that we then, again, address to an external email address. We attach a file. And in this case, part of the processing is a presentation to the user of the metadata that has been found and the options that user has for addressing it. 
to track changes. We have the three choices of accept all, reject all, and leave. And for comments, we have the choices of delete and leave. When we click OK, it is sent to the server for processing. Now, there's a lot more to Metadact. Uh, there's reporting on risk assessment, uh, cleaning and reattaching before sending, and uh, batch cleaning with the on-demand component, for example. Uh, but what we, we wanted you to see today is the flexibility of how simple or complex the user experience can be. Now I want to turn it over to Matt James for his discussion of 3B Clean and Metadact. Matt? Great. Thank you, Richard. So before we uh, we speak to really what we saw in, in Metadact there and how that compares to to 3B Clean today, it, we think it's important to definitely acknowledge and identify why firms chose to go with the 3B Clean solution uh, in the first place. And and the big piece of that was always around the flexibility of what the the solution could provide. And as we kind of dig into those, one of the main components was simplicity of the UI and the architecture. Uh, so what this meant was that there was flexibility in determining whether or not we would install something on exchange from a, a proprietary perspective of, of software or, or not. And that is identified here in the, the inline and what we're now calling the SMTP mode, where there was just a send connector to route to uh, a 3B Clean server, or the transport agent where there's truly uh, an installation that lives on exchange and and you can treat the cleaning server more as a tangent as opposed to something that is part of the mail flow. Um, in addition to that, it, there's always a focus on, on user experience. So Richard, you had mentioned a few times that we want to avoid user disruption, right? We don't want it to take eight to 10 clicks to send an email and having a single UI that was capable of, of handling all different types of files, uh, what was important to that. that directly uh, translates here into the non-invasive and minimal user disruption focus, right? We had the ability to never prompt, which was what we saw Richard do the first time, just assume my default policy, my practice area, or my firm's policy, um, but maybe only present it to a prompt to me when track changes or comments are present. You can see that on the right-hand side, the, the UI displays itself and I can have some alerting around, around track changes. We'll talk about how that's expanded in, in Metadata. The, the mobile experience has obviously been of importance ever since uh, mobile devices have been used more and more uh, in this cloud-first type of world. We want to ensure that, one, there's coverage and there was no uh, additional interaction required, but that there was the ability to deviate if necessary, right? So those email tags there gave the user the ability to say, I'd like to do something different than my default policy when I'm sending from a mobile device. I never have to, but I have the luxury of being able to do so. And the last piece, obviously, is reliability. As I spoke to a variety of individuals who were prospects at the time or currently uh, 3B Clean customers, we've always come to this agreement that while metadata is important, it is the second priority of, uh, of the email flow. And the first priority is that email goes out the door, right? So this could never be something that was standing in the way of that. Uh, there was a high success rate. It was resilient somewhat of a set it and forget it, where we even had individuals who'd reach out to our support team apologizing that they couldn't remember how to configure something, but they've never had to go back into the solution. It's always just worked. Uh, and the analogy I've always used with that was a, a sports analogy to say that it was really the offensive line, right? You didn't, you didn't know about 3B Clean or you didn't know its name unless it wasn't doing its job. As we now kind of correlate the two, uh, after seeing the demonstration and, and acknowledging where we were with 3B Clean and, and why people chose that solution, it's not necessarily an apples to apples approach from a, a product and feature perspective, right? Metadact actually offers a significant uh, more than 3B Clean did. So while still having that, that consistent coverage of cleaning of meta, metadata, uh, Metadact happens to have a lot of those bells and whistles that were often asked for. And as we saw in Richard's demonstration, do not need to be utilized, but are available. Uh, and as we start speaking to those, those are additional alerts for prompting, right? So 3B Clean could prompt if you had track changes or comments, but Metadata can provide alerts on much, much more. For example, in Excel files, you can identify hidden columns, rows, or, or, or cells. Uh, true failover with these core and node servers. Uh, so with 3B Clean, while there is failover is completely supported, 
there was a potential where you would have to manually uh, move a an email over to another server to let it go out. That's completely handled here automatically with the core server being able to control uh, what what ma messages are going out of what node servers and, and being able to uh, truly control the failover itself. Uh, there is a mobile UI. You can see on the right-hand side, this is an example where rather than just having to rely on a subject tag or email tag, you can actually have a user interface that allows the individual to pick and choose the policy that they would like to use when they're deviating. Richard spoke to the batch cleaning capability. 3B Clean previously only provided that locally. Uh, here we can clean local files or clean files that have come from a, a flash drive and directly uh, Put them into the document management system after clean, document management system after cleaning, uh, and that's important in the use case of lateral hires, let's say. Uh, and then the, the last two here are image cleaning, which is something that 3B Clean didn't provide whatsoever. Um, there's some some high profile stories out there about metadata being found in in the location services of, of images that have been um, taken from a, a mobile device, but uh, a big piece of this is the integration to other areas of of what we consider the collaboration space for external collaboration, uh, secure file transfer, file share integrations where additional steps do not need to be taken in order to clean. Uh, this can actually, actually happen passively and it ensures that the end user doesn't have a different experience or a different result when they share through those ways. And then the last piece is really the overall theme uh, to, to why Metadact as a platform has been chosen to go forward. It was nothing in regards to what 3B Clean currently did today, it was really a, a limitation of the technology. And as we have more and more forward thinking and innovative conversations, there's this mindset from legal that now that it's already in the mail flow and it does metadata, it should be able to do so much more, right? Things with chains of, chain of custody, potentially DLP and, and so forth. All right, thank you, Matt. Um, so some of the topics that we've addressed uh, with customers and potential customers over the past months uh, are mostly focused on 3B Clean. Uh, there are customers that are happy with 3B Clean um, as it does what they want it to do. What do we say to that, Matt? Yeah, we, we've had multiple conversations exactly like that with, I don't need it to do more. I have another solution that does that. I just need it to do what it does today, which is clean metadata. And and for those individuals and those firms, that's absolutely okay. Um, 3B Clean is still going to be uh, in a maintenance mode from a security perspective uh, and is going to be supported and, and um, will continue to work for you. The uh, piece that really we are just not investing in would be the new features and functionality uh, that effort is going to be put onto the, the Metadact uh, platform. Yeah, exactly, Matt. And and that's one of the, the topics that we talk about most is that, yes, you, you do not have to leave 3D clean uh, today or anytime soon, but there will be no new development of the product. Um, some customers uh, chose 3D clean for its simplicity from an architectural standpoint. What is the situation now? Yeah, absolutely. So I would I would preface this with uh, it's still simple, but there might be some additional um, setup that is required. Uh, that's purely for the benefit of of taking advantage of additional features, right? So I had mentioned the ability to have a mobile UI. I had mentioned the ability to have a core server that will automatically uh, address the failover and move from node server to node server, uh, as opposed to the manual intervention that would potentially be required today on 3D Clean. If you so choose to take advantage of those uh, optional but additional and, and beneficial capabilities, uh, you will have to understand that there there is a, a larger footprint from an architectural standpoint, but it's still simple, right? It still supports either of the architectural decisions you decide, whether that's the SMTP mode uh, or a transport agent that lives on exchange. Exactly. Um, Metadac supports any email system architecture, uh, Exchange Online, Exchange On-Prem, integration with Exchange, or as you just mentioned, SMTP. Uh, Metadac is completely scalable and supports any number of users from one basically to infinity. I guess nobody has reached a ceiling. You can start with a single cleaning server and grow to whatever you need. Uh, that could be pools of servers, uh, and it's all supported. Um, 
Metadata supports failover and replication between data centers. Um, there's just so there, there's just so much. Uh, the another topic that keeps coming up is so why did we choose Metadact over Three B Clean as the product to go forward? Yeah, and I think we've and kind I of think? you know alluded to that over the over the conversation, right? And 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 a big piece to that is what more we could provide. So here at Latera Microsystems, we, uh, we're we always holding our development team accountable for ensuring that anything that goes into our products are addressing uh, challenges or trends or, or needs um, for our customers. And, and this is a perfect example of that. 3B Clean being acquired uh, at, by Microsystems meant that we somewhat hit a ceiling from a development perspective. And and we could only really do meta, metadata cleaning and, and do it well, but that's all we could we could do. So as I pointed out earlier, there are some capabilities of secure file transfer or file share integrations, which today typically in the legal desktop, which is fragmented by a variety of vendors and, and different solutions, we find that there's a gap in technology, right? When I share with a secure file transfer, for example, I'm routing around Exchange, I don't get metadata cleaning. So a big piece of that has been to enhance the integration points with ways that we're now sharing uh, in this, this mobility type of world and, and, and client demands changing. Uh, but the, the other benefit to that is to be able to do more, right? And, and that's where we kind of spoke to chain of custody, always knowing where our data is, um, maybe being able to pick and choose from a, a, a matter perspective that it's going to the right recipient, um, identifying errors that at the time of send, uh, as well as, as the DLP stuff that we had started to discuss. So it really gives us the platform to, to grow this solution to do more than just the, the, the focal point of the metadata. And I want to reiterate that 3B Clean as an, uh, as an acquired product, uh, a product that was required by our company, uh, it has reached its ceiling in development. On the other hand, Metadact uh, continues to evolve, and, and Metadact 4 includes major inv advances in cleaning capabilities, uh, architectural flexibility, and use case support. Uh, going forward, Metadact 4 and versions beyond will, we think, and we plan, will merge the best of 3B Clean and Metadact. So, you know, both products address the metadata that we all need cleaned. Uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, a move from 3B Clean to Metadact is, it's not really an apples for apples change because Metadact is actually an upgrade. It offers more features. However, this is a one-for-one -one change as far as licensing goes. Um, you can coordinate with your uh, customer service manager, uh, and any concerns you have about costs can be discussed with your account executive. Um, but as long as the licensing is up to date, uh, there is no licensing cost involved. And uh, just a plug for our support, guys, you can always contact us through the customer portal. Our support folks uh, uh, respond very promptly. Um, the first version and, of Metadact, uh, go ahead. Sorry. And, and Richard, I was going to say, right before you kind of get into this, I think that uh, there, there's maybe some clarity that we could provide. We've, we've constantly referred to Metadact as the platform going forward, but you brought up a great point, which is as you get into what you're going to speak to here for the release cycle, it is a comprehensive solution, right? So we are taking components that were very, very valuable and, and desirable in 3B Clean and including those with Metadact, but it is the, the architectural platform and the back end architecture of Metadact that's moving forward. And, and that speaks, that, that intros perfectly into one of the things I'm about to mention, and that is the first version of Metadact 4 will be available in October of this year. The next version, which will be uh, January 2019, is where we anticipate the Metadact hook to the 3B, 3B clean front end that many of you have requested. Uh, so, you know, keep your, keep your eyes open and, uh, and, uh, call us with any questions about uh, that that transition. We have some questions. Uh, we've gotten some questions. Um, so, I, I, so some of this is a little repetitive, but uh, one person asks, how long do I have on 3B Clean? Um, and as we've mentioned, 3B Clean will continue to be supported 
but no new development will take place. The, the sunset date has not yet been decided. So there's no need to panic. Um, but if you have a roadmap, let your customer success manager knows what, know what that is so that we can fit into your roadmap. If you need to know more about our roadmap, talk to the same people, contact anybody at, at Latera Microsystems and we'll talk about how that can work for you. The next question is, what is the cost to change? Uh, the migration will be treated as a one-to-one -one change. As long as your license for 3B Clean is up to date, there is no charge for the migration. Again, talk to your account executive or your customer success manager about those details. Uh, next question. How will my current customizations be migrated? So a solutions engineer will be assigned to your uh, project. Um, and the, that solutions engineer will assist with that. Whether you just want them to give you guidance about how you should uh, set up your customizations or whether you you want them to do those customizations, uh, we will work with you. We anticipate no problem with configuring the, the product at all. Um, so, right, we, Richard, like this, to, is, this is a point yes. where I think if I could, uh, this is not going to be a, a rip and replace, right? This will feel as an upgrade. So just to elaborate on, on what Richard had said for the 2019 release, uh, we will provide the ability to take advantage of the 3B Clean UI uh, so that there is no change to your end users and allow that to work with the MetaDAX backend. Uh, and that, in that process, it should feel as a true upgrade, right? It was the server upgrade, uh, and we help you get to the point where you have the appropriate architecture, but the user experience, we did show what MetaDAX 4 has uh, to offer today in the demonstration. So that's a UI that's uh, different, but very similar in the way that it works. You have the luxury of, of keeping both, it really will depend on, on when you choose to move. But as, as we had mentioned, if you're happy with 3B Clean, you can remain on that today. By 2019, you'll have the ability to maintain that user experience. And that truly becomes the, the first release of what we consider the comprehensive solution that will do far more than, than the metadata side of things, but also honor and respect uh, the reason that the firm purchased the product that they have. Uh, and, and, and that's our goal going forward. Thank you, Matt. That's an excellent point. So we like to keep these uh, short and sweet. Um, we, we are out of time. Um, so we'll make that our final question. But if you asked a question that wasn't answered, we will be in touch with you and we'll provide an answer to you. Uh, we hope that this was helpful and that you will contact us with any questions or concerns. We thank you for attending. Uh, good day and good night.